Everyone loves a good creature movie, and it gets even better if the monster menace is of alien origin. In a world filled with super popular creature feature franchises, we bring you a dozen underrated alien movies that will make you squirm and shudder. So grab the popcorn bucket and join us on this cosmic horror ride. Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. So thank you. Let's begin. Look! Look at them! They're everywhere! They Live, 1988. Are you seeing the world in monochrome? Because to start off the list, we have the 1988 cult classic movie They Live, which is a story of how a man with a special pair of sunglasses discovers that disguised aliens are living amongst humans and controlling humanity's every step. Early on in the film, a hacker broadcasts a message on the television that mysterious signals are causing humans to live in a dreamlike state, while the hacker is beaten down by the reinforcement agents. The film's protagonist, a vagabond named Nada, chances upon a pair of sunnies, which show him the world in black and white. Petrified, Nada realizes the message on our TV is actually true, and they're indeed being mind-controlled by a race of blue aliens from another galaxy with oppressive messages like obey, reproduce, consume submit, concealed in everyday items such as billboards, magazines, and restaurant placards. For example, an advert that says, come to the Caribbean, actually reads, marry and reproduce, when we see them through the anti-alien glasses. To make things worse, the aliens are backed by a bunch of corrupt humans who have been granted positions in power in return. When Nada and his protester friends revolt, they're subdued by the police, who are actually aliens. However, Nada manages to track down the alien transmitter, which is emitting the signal that's brainwashing the humans, and destroys it, thus waking everyone up from their deadly requiem. However, in the ensuing clash, Nada bleeds to his death, but not before giving the finger to the aliens. One of the most spine-chilling scenes in the movie is when Nada sees an alien for the first time, and its grotesque skeletal appearance with menacingly glowing eyes freaks him out. Hailing from outer space, the blue aliens intend to reshape Earth to their liking by using global warming to their advantage. In the process, they seek the political powers and wealth of the world, and also constant sexual gratification, all of which they're able to achieve by promoting consumerism. The blue aliens are equipped with cryptic wrist devices, kind of like smartwatches that help them teleport and communicate. Based on a 60s short by Ray Nelson, They Live is writer-director John Carpenter's ultimate masterpiece, which has a number of underlying socio-economic themes, such as excessive commercialism and political corruption, menaces that plagued America in the 80s. The aliens' ghoul-like appearance further symbolized corrupt versions of human beings. They Live also delivered an environmental message by incorporating premonitions about the exhaustion of Earth's resources, initially being tagged as as preposterous and disappointing by critics, this sci-fi alien flick soon attained the status of an underrated horror gem. They Live is a must-watch because of the film's terrifying relevance even today. Oh. That which killed me. Enemy Mine, 1985. Next up, we have 1985's Enemy Mine, a hearty tale of friendship spun around an alien and a human warrior, who start off as foes and end up as besties. Set in the late 21st century, the events of Enemy Mine take place at a time when the humans and the alien race of Drax remain engaged in rampant interstellar battle, fought through their war spacecraft. During one such clash, one human protagonist, Willis Davidge, and Drac pilot Jeriba Shigen accidentally crash land on the lifeless planet Byron 4, whose surface is covered in volcanic eruptions. Uninhabitable conditions on the planet compel Jeriba and Willis to become friends, who save each other's lives several times over the next three years. Owing to the Drac's trait of reproducing asexually, Jeriba is soon discovered to be pregnant and dies giving birth to a baby, whose name Zamis. Jeriba's dying wish is for Willis to ensure that Zamis unites with the Jeriba clan in the Drac homeworld. Zamis grows up under the fierce protection of Uncle Willis. But as fate would have it, Zamis is captured by an evil human team of miners, called the Scavengers, who roam across galaxies, enslaving Drax. Willis is shot and apparently killed when he attempts to prevent Zamis from being taken away. However, Willis is soon discovered by his human clan, who bring him back to their spacecraft. But when he suddenly awakens and begins speaking the Drac language, he's suspected to have sided with the alien race, that humans have known to be enemies forever. On his own, Willis steals a spacecraft and begins his rescue mission for Zamis. Willis infiltrates the Scavenger ship and following some major sci-fi action, manages to free Zamis and the other Drax slaves. Upon 
returning Xamus to his original Drac family, Willis thus fulfills Jeriba's last wish. The epilogue reveals that when Xamus has a child, Willis' name is added to the Jeriba line of lineage. Now let's get to know the Dracs a little better. They're a reptilian humanoid alien from the planet Dracon, which is mostly comprised of water, thus making the Dracs excellent swimmers. The Dracs have hardened brown skin without noses or ears on their face. Because of their hermaphrodite biology, Drax can reproduce on their own. The concept of lineage is of great importance to the Drax. When a young Drac is to join the society, the parent Drac must recite its entire lineage correctly, which in Xamus' case was done by his godfather Willis. Directed by Wolfgang Peterson, Enemy Mind's underlying message is that friendship transcends everything, and even the strangest bunch of people and creatures can become buddies. Give this film a try, as its refreshing take on alien companionship will warm your heart. <laughs> The Beyond, 2017. Our next recommendation is the 2017 indie movie The Beyond, which chronicles how modified astronauts venture out into deep space to investigate a mysterious void-like entity. Set in 2019, humans witness the sudden appearance of a mysterious portal in the sky, which the space agency calls The Void. It is theorized to be a wormhole, with the appearance of a planet-like structure on the other end of the portal. As a sense of alien threat engulfs Earth, the space agency top boss Jillian LaRue decides to send astronauts into outer space to examine The Void. But that turns out to be an impossible idea, as the pressure of the gravitational waves would crush the astronauts. Meanwhile, cosmologist Jessica Johnson believes that it's the first attempt by intelligent extraterrestrial beings to make contact with Earth, further encouraging Jillian's idea of venturing into space. To solve the space agency's dilemma about how to reach the void without getting killed and explore the mysterious spheres that have appeared in the sky, a secret military organization offers help in the form of a technologically advanced plan, Human 2.0. It's an advanced robotics project that fuses the brains of human beings with with a cyborg body. Through a rather painful process, after the first fusion process kills a wheelchair-bound drone pilot, Jessica Johnson volunteers and undergoes an excruciating process to become the cyborg version, ready for a treacherous mission. After nearing the wormhole and following a massive detonation, Jessica is lost in space and is discovered a week later with memories worth several years. Her memories suggest the existence of another habitable planet and that the alien beings are not malicious creatures. When an apocalyptic event destroys the solar system and hurls debris towards Earth, the plotline offers its ultimate twist. The spheres hovering around the Earth that were previously thought to be dangerous transform into shields to protect the planet, revealing the aliens are actually Earth's allies. In the aftermath, the aliens create an alternate planet for humans to move into, thus offering renewed hope for humanity. With its documentary-like format, director Hazraf Dulo's debut film The Beyond instills a cosmic fear that seems very real. The horror is insinuated through a constant sense of doom and the fear of the unknown. The aliens are never really shown in the movie. Instead of explaining the extraterrestrial threats through direct visuals, the Beyond does that with grainy and broken footage. If you're looking for a dystopian take on humanity's future, then the Beyond is your gig. The Faculty, 1998. 1998's The Faculty will give you nightmares about going to school. The film has a simplistic and well-told storyline of school teachers turning out to be parasitic aliens, but its stellar cast, also comprising of Salma Hayek and Elijah Wood, and its adventurous thrill make it an edge-of-the-seat watch. A mixed bunch of high school students in Ohio suspect something eerie is afoot when they discover a mysterious creature on the football field. The creature is theorized to be a species of cephalopod parasite called Mesozoan. Soon enough, the students witness their drama teacher, Ms. Olsen, and football coach Joe Willis shoving a parasitic creature down the school nurse's ear. Reckoning the faculty members are being controlled by aliens, the band of friends share their theory with the science teacher, Mr. Furlong, who turns on them and attempts to infect the students. Left with no choice, the classmates begin their own investigation with a sample of the parasite procured by student Casey, played by Elijah Wood. It's discovered that the alien creatures require water to thrive, and thus the only way to destroy them is through the dehydration of the creatures or their hosts. Meanwhile, the students realize that the creatures cannot sustain the effects of an ecstasy-like drug, which a rogue student Zeke illegally sells at the school. The powdery drug is actually concentrated caffeine, which drains the creatures of their water, and when humans consume the drug, they become unsuitable hosts. Meanwhile, some of the classmates who have already been secretly infected show murderous insects and destroy the majority of Zeke's drug collection. Back at the school, a football game is underway, and the infected students of the school are corrupting the opponent team members. To thwart this alien invasion, the students decide to hunt down and terminate the alien 
Alien Queen. But things get messy in the gym, when Principal Drake is wrongly identified as the Queen and gunned down. Amidst the alien ruckus, Mary Beth, the sprightly new student of the school, sheds her human disguise to reveal herself as the Queen, prompting Casey to corner her in the locker room. Casey gets infected, but also manages to insert the drug in Mary Beth's eyes, thus ending the Alien Queen's effects on all those infected. Casey, a reclusive student, becomes a local hero as the alien invasion becomes a media sensation, despite the authorities denying it. The faculty, open to contrasting reviews, being called out for character clutter and praised for its light fun and humor at the same time. If you're craving a horror teen movie, The Faculty, with its high-octane action suspense and alien gore, is the perfect pick. Pandorum, 2009. Another hidden gem of the science fiction horror genre is 2009's Pandorum. When Earth's resources are depleted, humans took off on an interstellar ship called the Elysium, in which the inhabitants were put into hypersleep, with a rotating crew to wake up biennially and maintain the ship. When two members of the flight crew, Lieutenant Peyton and Corporal Bauer, awaken, they find out the reactor has malfunctioned, and Peyton starts navigating the labyrinths of the ship to fix it. On the way, Peyton discovers a band of cannibalistic humanoids who attempt to kill him. When he chances upon Shepard, a cook who has survived without going into hypersleep, Shepard narrates the horrific tale of what took place aboard the Elysium since the time it left Earth. Corporal Gallo, who was in charge of the Elysium, became deranged after witnessing the Earth was lost in a catastrophic event, and realizing there was no hope for return. He induced Pandorum in the crewmates, which is a form of psychosis, caused by existing in deep space, and is further aggravated by stress and paranoia, resulting in delirium and nosebleed. Gallo also resorted to killing, instigating a violent culture among the crewmates mates, and then went back into hypersleep. The remaining population, now violent and rogue, evolved into cannibalistic mutants. Their transformation was further aided by an enzyme that was meant to help the inhabitants of Elysium adjust to a new planet. The film climaxes with a shocking revelation that Elysium had in fact reached their target planet 800 years ago, and the happenings inside the ship were triggered by Gallo's Pandorum-induced condition. Peyton himself is actually revealed to be Corporal Gallo, who killed the real Peyton years ago and subconsciously assumed his identity. The film ends on a hopeful note, with the freed shipmates discovering lush lands on the new planet, while the ship is drowned along with the cannibalistic humanoids. Pandorum is indeed a fine piece of interstellar horror, with its grim storyline and a dark, moody setting. Be sure to give this one a try. The Hidden, 1987. Next up, we have the 1987 movie The Hidden, which has all the ingredients of an edge-of-the-seat thriller. From high-octane car chases and people turning into frenzied killers, to an alien that murders for sport, and an extraterrestrial lawman, The Hidden has got it all. The adventure begins when Detective Thomas Beck and FBI agent Lloyd Gallagher start pursuing a serial killer, who's leaving corpses all around town. It's soon revealed that a bloodthirsty alien creature is assuming the identities of different hosts, and killing the previous ones in the process. Process. Surprisingly, Gallagher also reveals himself to be from another planet and wants to end the alien menace on Earth. While these revelations are dismissed as unbelievable by Detective Beck, the alien transfers itself into the body of Beck's supervisor, Lieutenant John Masterson. John, in his possessed state, reveals the alien's true nature to Beck by enduring several rounds of bullets himself. This prompts Beck to believe in Gallagher's explanation of the alien threat, and together, they try to take down Masterson at the police station. However, it proves to be a futile attempt as Gallagher's special weapon can only kill the alien when it's without a human host. When the deadly alien latches onto a senator, Gallagher chars the politician's body with a flamethrower, forcing the extraterrestrial baddie to come out, and then slaughters it with his alien weapon. It's revealed that Gallagher has been in pursuit of the alien ever since it killed his family on another planet. Having avenged the death of his loved ones, Gallagher transfers his life essence to Beck, who's severely wounded in the alien battle, so Beck can reunite with his family. The Hidden has achieved a cult status over the years, and is hailed for being a well-constructed thriller with an unconventional sci-fi ending. It's a satisfying blend of action, thriller, and alien gore, and should definitely be on your must-watch list. Super 8, 2011. Our next pick here is 2011's Super 8, which remains quite an underrated sci-fi thriller. The film being underappreciated is a total surprise, given that Spielberg produced it and J.J. Abrams was the director. Super 8 comes with signature Spielberg elements, such as a small-town horror, a bunch of cycle-riding adventurous kids, 
and an alien invasion. When 14-year-old Joe and his friends are filming a movie for a Super 8 formal film competition, they accidentally witness a train crash that releases a sinister extraterrestrial creature in their town. Subsequently, the town is plagued by mysterious happenings, such as dogs moving to other towns, electrical equipment going missing, and the fluctuation of electrical powers. When Joe's friend Alice is abducted, the kids are prompted to launch an investigation, which leads them to their biology teacher's trailer, who's driving the cargo train that fateful night. A film tape reveals that the government captured an alien several years ago, and by keeping its spacecraft locked, they conducted experiments on the creature. The alien somehow managed to establish a psychic connection with the biology teacher, encouraging him to set the creature free. This plan is sabotaged by Colonel Nellick, who further pursues the kids for knowing too much. Joe and his friends discover several missing townspeople hanging from a cavern, where the alien entity is creating a spacecraft with all the stolen electrical equipment from town. After Joe saves Alice and the other captives, the angered alien psychically connects with Joe, but realizes not all humans are malicious. The creature's alien energy then rips out metal elements from across the town and draws them like a magnet to complete its spacecraft, marking the alien entity's exit from Earth. Super 8 was conceptualized by combining two movie ideas, one about an alien invasion and the other about kids making a film of their own, and the end result was this sci-fi masterpiece. Super 8 is dipped in true blue Spielberg nostalgia, with the genius of Abrams shining through. Interestingly, fans often point out how the vibe of Stranger Things is similar to this movie, given that the two projects are set just decades apart. Species, 1995. The movie Species taught us to not mess with alien DNA. In this sci-fi horror, the primary antagonist is a creepy human-alien hybrid who can shapeshift at will and intends to infect the human race with genes of their species. When Earth scientists receive some alien DNA with friendly instructions on how to splice them with human DNA, they go ahead with the experiment. As a result, a female hybrid being comprising human and alien traits is created, whose name Syl. Owing to her alien genes, she turns into a 12-year-old girl in just three months. But when she starts revealing her violent nature, her creators decide to terminate her. But she manages to escape, and in time, transforms into an attractive woman in her 20s. Syl harbors the goal of mating with humans to corrupt their gene pool with alien DNA so that an entire generation of aliens can be spawned, who would then take over Earth. Before Syl can carry on with her evil plans, she's tracked down by government agent Xavier Smith, biologist Laura Baker, and mercenary Press Linux. Reverting to her alien form, Syl escapes into the forest, only to reappear later and mate with a colleague of Xavier and Laura. Syl conceives almost instantly and manages to give birth, with her young offspring instantly revealing its bloodthirsty nature. However, Syl is killed by a blow from Linux's grenade launcher, while the offspring is incinerated by a flamethrower. As the movie ends, a rat nibbles on Syl's tentacles and mutates into a malicious creature with killer instincts instincts, thus setting the premise for a sequel. The success of Species resulted in not just a sequel, but a franchise compromising subsequent movies, a novel adaptation, and comics. Interestingly, the hybrid alien creature was designed by H.R. Giger, who famously created the extraterrestrial creatures of the alien film franchise. Portrayed by Natasha Henstridge, this alien species has a grotesque appearance with tentacles and mandibles, and hardened brown skin. With this creature at its center, the movie explored the underlying themes of the dark side of biological weapons the power of female sexuality, and the significance of procreation. Species comes highly recommended as a movie that incorporates a non-stop thrilling chase, splattered with alien horrors. <laughs> Annihilation 2018 2018 sci-fi movie Annihilation is another cosmic horror masterpiece, with Natalie's noteworthy portrayal of the protagonist Lena, a biologist and a former soldier. Lena and her team ventures into the Shimmer, a treacherous realm which has cropped up around a meteor crash site. Communication equipment malfunctions within the Shimmer, leaving the explorers at the mercy of the mutated creatures inside. They encounter humanoid plant forms, mutated albino alligators, and even a mutant bear, alongside the corpse of a soldier from the previous mission, which has transformed into a dead colony of lichen. The discovery of the disfigured body leads to the theorization that the Shimmer is an extraterrestrial prism, which corrupts all life forms inside it, including the DNA of the explorers. One by one, Lena loses her friends to gruesome deaths as one is mutilated by the violent bear, while another transforms herself into a humanoid plant, and a third one becomes a faceless creature. At the center of the Shimmer stands a lighthouse, where Lena discovers the corpse of her husband Kane, alongside a duplicate version of him in a video 
videotape, which mysteriously reveals where to look for Lena in the future. The Shimmer also gives birth to Lena's evil doppelganger, which Lena destroys by burning down the lighthouse with a grenade. The film ends with a Kane and Alina reuniting, but questioning whether they're the real beings or the doppelganger versions created in the Shimmer. Given the film's ambitious premise, it was deemed too intellectual and complicated after the test screening. However, makers decided to stick to the original cut and retain its open-ended final scenes. As an adaptation of the 2014 novel of the same name, Annihilation is described by director Alex Garland as a memory of the book as opposed to an outright recreation, to retain its dreamlike charm. Annihilation surely deserves your attention, as it promises to keep you wondering about the cosmic mysteries even after the film is long over. Attack the Block 2011. Take a breather from the crop of intense sci-fi films and enjoy this comedy action horror for a change. We're talking about 2011's Attack the Block. When a meteor fragment crashes into a car in South London, a bunch of hoodlums discover that it's the beginning of an alien invasion. With their savage attitude, they declare that the aliens have chosen the wrong planet to attack and pick up their unconventional weapons, such as a baseball bat, some firecrackers, a samurai sword, and metal rods. They're successful in their first attempt, as they manage to kill a dog-like alien creature, which they offer to the local drug lord, hoping to gain popularity. But they soon discover the presence of more threatening, bear-like aliens who keep following the band of boys. The aliens are revealed to drift around in space in the form of spores, till they discover a habitable planet and feed on its life forms. The female alien then signals to the male forms to arrive on the new planet by releasing extreme levels of pheromone, so that they can mate and populate the new world with their species. The young hoodlums realize that having killed a female alien, they carry the pheromone stench with them, thus making it impossible to shake off the pursuing aliens. The boys befriend the woman who they attempted to mug earlier, and with her help devise a plan to incinerate the alien creatures by causing a gas explosion. As the plan turns out to be a success, group leader Moses, who was infamous for his notoriety earlier, is hailed as a local hero. The film features hairless, dog-like female alien creatures and the menacing bear-like male alien monsters which have no eyes, nose, or ears, but are equipped with bioluminescent fanged jaws. The echolocation sounds generated by the aliens are a combination of growls and snarls of other animals, and even the scream of a woman. For the movie, director Joe Cornish drew inspiration from several real-life things, such as his very own experience of getting mugged, and his mischievous pet cat, which inspired the bear-like alien designs. By establishing the rogue group of boys as planet-saving heroes, the film also countered the hoodie horror genre that portrayed urban youth through a negative filter. Splinter 2008 The 2008 movie Splinter is another underrated horror gem, which is as creepy as the alien creature in it. Given its unsure nature, the Splinter monster is believed to be from outside Earth's biosphere, and hence alien in nature. It's a spiky parasitic fungus, which jabs itself into sentient hosts, causing them to twist and turn in deadly ways, thus killing the living being. Using this zombie version of the corpse, the fungus then hunts for a new host, causing a bloody rampage on the way. The idea behind it was that the monster was ignorant of how human bodies work, and thus abuse the host to its own liking. It all begins when young couple Seth and Polly are on their way to a romantic getaway, and they're carjacked by a convict named Denny and his girlfriend Lacey. Arriving at an abandoned gas station, they encounter the blood-soaked, mutilated body of the attendant, who had been infected by the splinter fungus. Lacey is the first of the four to die, following which Denny also gets infected as spikes start protruding from his arm. To prevent the rest of Denny from being infected, Seth and Polly carry out a gory mutilation process, which earns the film a nomination in the most memorable mutilation category. Seth realizes that the fungus hunts down hosts by tracing their body temperature and attacks the warmest living being they can find. Using ice bags, Seth attempts to make it to the car while Denny and Polly hide in the freezer of the gas station. However, their body temperature returns to normal. The splinter fungus is drawn back to them, prompting Denny to set a gas pump machine on fire, incinerating the monster. Realizing he's been infected yet again, Denny lets Polly and Seth escape, and later sets the entire gas station ablaze, seemingly destroying all the infected corpses, unaware that many more infected beings are lying dormant in the woods. The movie is riddled with grisly scenes, with a notable one being when Lacey's arm is severed by the gas station door, and it begins acting on its own while generating spikes from the gushing wound. To put it simply, Splinter is a satisfying horror gore with a bizarre monster at its center.
The Signal 2014 To round off our list, we have the 2014 movie The Signal, which chronicles the adventures of three MIT students, Jonah, Nick, and Haley, who suddenly find themselves confined within the whitewashed walls of a gigantic factory. Their arms are tattooed with the cryptic number 2.3.5.41, which adds up to 51, leading them to believe that they're in Area 51, which is a super classified government facility. Nick realizes his legs have been replaced with alien prosthetic limbs, while Jonah gets arms created by alien technology technology, and Haley has alien implants in her spine. In the absence of any explanations, except for the interrogation carried out by the mysterious Dr. Damon, the trio of friends attempt to break free, only to realize they're stationed in the middle of the Nevada desert, and crossing an endless canyon is their only way out. After Jonah sacrifices himself to facilitate Nick and Haley's escape, the couple is separated by Dr. Damon. Nick realizes they're not on Earth, but on a huge alien spacecraft named 2.3.5.41 that's about to land on an alien planet filled with bizarre are skyscrapers. Dr. Damon reveals that they have carried out experiments on Nick, who earlier suffered from a muscle degenerative condition, and is now the perfect integration of human will and alien technology, the alien's finest achievement. Nick must now live with his newfound alien physique, in a world where he can never reunite with Haley. The signal explores the theme of conflict between logic and emotion. The titular term signal actually signifies an inner calling, a gnawing feeling that identifies an individual's true calling, such as in Nick's case, he discovers that he's ultimately driven by love, despite living a life of logic and science all this while. The Signal is a blend of hard science fiction and striking visuals with dollops of extraterrestrial thrill. Well, that was quite a list of bizarre alien creatures and mysterious interstellar beings whose target planet has always been Destination Earth. So which of these head-scratching plot lines piqued your interest? Please share with us in the comments below. And if you liked our video, keep watching this space for more marvelous content. Till then, stay away from the squiggly alien parasites and zombie school teachers. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone!